Good afternoon, gardeners. It is Sunday, March 29th, and it is a really unseasonably warm 85 degree day here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And for those of you who follow my channel, you'll know that in this location I'm showing you right now, I've been growing fig trees for almost a full year now. And you'll notice that I consolidated my collection because I intend on adding a whole bunch more uh, once the growing season really gets going and I can up pot them. I have selected six varieties for in-ground planting. Fig trees come from Mediterranean climates and Mediterranean climates are virtually rainless in the summer. So fig trees are used to ripening their fruits in the summer when it is completely rainless and very warm. So fig trees have not naturally developed a mechanism to deal with rain and ripening simultaneously. As a result, when figs get wet, they tend to swell, burst, and spoil. I live on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, and our precipitation patterns are basically inverse that of the Mediterranean climates. Our late fall into early spring is the drier period, and we get really wet into the summer when we get lots of humidity thunderstorms. So this is a very poor climate to grow figs because it tends to rain on them a lot. I'm trying to find some standout figs that perform well in my climate because it's very difficult to find figs that actually perform well in high humidity and wet summer climates. The overwhelming majority of figs will fail here and be very poor performers that split, burst, and spoil. So in summary, this video is going to be all about the varieties of figs that I have determined perform well in humid, rainy summer climates. So for those of you on the Gulf Coast and in the Southeast that deal with wet, rainy conditions in the summer, but you're interested in growing figs, this video may be of use to you because I've done quite a bit of work to find some standout varieties. And as of the roughly 20 to 25 figs that I grew last year, I did find six standouts, and I'm going to go over all six of those varieties for you right now. So here you'll see the six varieties that I'm going to plant in ground. They're all lined up, spaced approximately six feet apart, where they're going to go in their final resting place. So I'll take you through each of these varieties and tell you which ones are standouts and why. The very first variety that I'm going to show you is Smith. And this right here is my Smith fig tree. You can see it's starting to leaf out. This is one of the very first fig trees that I rooted in my climate. And I trialed it last summer. Smith has a notorious habit of being a good performer in the south. So that is why I selected the Smith fig tree. And I found this to be the case. The Smith fig is very resistant to splitting and does well in the rain and humidity compared to most figs. I did notice that it tended to attract some bugs, mainly ants, but that can be dealt with by applying some kind of adhesive tape, like a double-sided tape to the bottom of your trees, or putting coffee grounds around your trees to try and keep the ants away, because if you can keep the ants off your trees, that was really the biggest con with this fig. Uh, I found the Smith to make a smaller to medium-sized fig, and they're very sweet with a berry flavor, and I found that the flavor was reminiscent of a strawberry pancake syrup. It was a very, very good performing fig. It yielded a very high amount of figs, and it was also very vigorous. So for southern growers, I think this is a real standout variety, and I would recommend it. So we're going to see how this performs in ground. The only possible con that I can tell you is I've heard stories that the Smith fig is not the hardiest fig. So if you live in a northern climate, it may not be the best choice for cold hardiness in ground. However, it was a very good performer for me. The fig tree that you see in front of you right now is a Col de Dame Noir. It's beginning to leaf out. This was the very first fig cutting that rooted for me of any fig that I ever tried to root as a cutting. The Col de Dame Noir was an outstanding performer for me last year in my climate. While it did not produce as many figs as the Smith fig tree did, I found the production to be very high and very equally spaced. Whereas the Smith fig tree tended to produce a lot of fruits all over the place, this Col de Dame Noir tended to make its figs equally spaced on the nodes, so it was a very pretty symmetric looking tree. 
and I found that while the eye on the fig was not completely closed, it was a fairly tight eye. I also found that this tree did not attract bugs at all, so I had no issues with ants on this tree at all. I found that the figs were about medium sized and they were very resistant to splitting and did well in the rain and humidity. Some did burst here and there, but overall I'd say 80 to 90% of them did not split and it held up pretty well to the rain and was pretty resistant to spoilage. I found that the flavor and the texture was typical of that of a col de dame. It was very cake-like. It had a very, very thick interior texture, very good quality, very rich berry flavor, and I would say it was, uh, the Col de Doms are generally not very sweet figs. I would say the sweetness is a mild to moderate sweetness at most. So for those who don't like very uh, sweet figs, but like figs that have a rich berry flavor, it's a very good fig and it has a very rich interior. This is an excellent all around fig and I really enjoyed it. So it is definitely getting a permanent spot in my garden in the ground. The next fig tree on my list is the Col de Dame Blanc. It's a little bit behind most of my other fig trees when it comes to budding out, and that's pretty consistent with the lateness of the fig. I found this fig tree to be later than my Col de Dame Noir. Now this Col de Dame Blanc, I'm planting this for a very specific reason, and that is because the best two figs that I had all season were off of this Col de Dame Blanc tree. I actually found that the Col de Dame Blanc was a little difficult to grow in my climate. It did not respond too well to the rains and the humidity, and I found that the figs tended to swell and burst on me and attract bugs. So I actually didn't get a lot of fruit off of this tree. However, the reason why it is getting a dedicated spot in the ground is because the fruit quality absolutely blew me away. First of all, this is a fairly large fig, and it's, it's hard to find large figs of really good quality, but the Col de Dame Blanc typically gave figs that were 60 to 70 grams, which is a pretty good sized fig. But the thing that's absolutely a standout is the texture and the flavor of this fig. The texture and flavor is very similar to the Col de Dame Noir in the sense that it had that really deep burgundy, rich, thick, cake-like interior that you get on the Col de Dame Noir, and it also had the rich berry flavor that you get on the Col de Dame Noir, but it was just an order of magnitude above the Noir when it comes to flavor. If you give the Noir a 9 rating when it comes to flavor and texture, you're going to give the Col de Dame Blanc a 10. It's just on another level, and it just has this wonderful acid punch, this bite to it, this rich, deep, depth of flavor that's just incredible and the texture is really what makes this fig. It's like biting into cake. It is just so thick and so delicious that even if I only get a handful of figs to ripen for me off my tree then it is worth it because they are that phenomenal. They just blew me away and if you're looking for a production fig in the humid south I don't think this is the one that you want to select, but in terms of texture and flavor, this is just an incredible fig. There's also the chance that as this matures, the fruit will regulate and get a little bit better. So I'm hoping once the roots really extend in the ground, I'm hoping it'll be a it'll be a better performer and it won't be so prone to splitting because when you grow in a container environment the rains come and you go from the fig tree being pretty dried out on a hot summer's day to now a deluge of rain so when you get those big fluctuations in moisture they tend to be more prone to bursting and splitting I'm thinking when I put this in ground because it's harder to saturate the ground and it's harder to have those big changes in moisture content in ground. The soil is so much better at regulating moisture. I think some of that will start to go away in, in this tree. So I'm thinking in ground I'll get higher production numbers while still maintaining that incredible flavor. For those of you that follow my videos, you knew this one was coming. This is the I-258, the Italian 258 fig tree. This is by far my favorite fig tree overall. This tree just absolutely blew me away. Everything about this fig tree was just absolutely tens. The production was absolutely incredible. I may have gotten more figs off this tree than any of my other trees. The vigor was absolutely incredible. I think it has the thickest caliper of any one of my trees. It just grew like a beast. And the quality of figs 
that this tree put out was just absolutely incredible. Not only was it one of my earliest producing figs of the year, I was eating off this tree maybe maybe number two or number three in my collection. It was, it was pretty early for me, but the size was absolutely fantastic. The typical size was 50 to 60 grams, which is a really nice uh, a really nice size and the texture and the taste and the flavor was just absolutely delicious this fig is a very syrupy fig and loves to drip honey from the eye and it also tasted like a very rich berry maple syrup almost if you took strawberries and blueberries and you mashed them up and you added maple syrup to them and then you let them sit in the microwave and combine them all together and then cool them back down it's just like this pool of berry syrup it's it's just an absolutely incredible fig. It was my overall best performer. Everything about this fig was just 10s. If I had to give any negative comment about this fig, it would be that the eye is not completely closed. It's a tight eye, but it is not completely closed. So with the heaviest rains later in the summer, I did get a few figs that did burst on me. However, 80 to 90% of them did not burst, did not spoil, and I got to eat a very large percentage of figs off of my tree. This is just a knockout fig, and there's no way that I could survive without having this fig tree planted in the ground. This fig tree right here is my Borgeso Blanca Negra fig tree. This fig tree is one that I'm taking a little bit of a gamble on, and that's because it only produced three or four figs for me last year. While it did a fantastic job of growing, I found this fig tree to be very vigorous and put on one of the largest calipers on any of my fig tree, second only to my Italian 258 fig tree. It just didn't produce a lot of fruit for me. However, the reason why I'm taking the risk on this tree is because the handful of fruits I did get all ripened for me and they were all fantastic. This made a medium to large size fig that was about 50 to 60 grams, similar in size to the Italian 258. However, this is a striped fig. That's a striped fig, not a variegated fig. It has very nice burgundy and dark purple striping on it. It's one of the most beautiful figs I've ever seen. And the flavor of this fig is just great. It has a very deep berry flavor and a syrupy component to it. So if you like syrupy figs like I do, this is a real winner. I'm very confident that once the tree gets older, it will produce a lot better. So that's why I'm going to plant it in ground. The nice thing about it is, is it has a very tight eye not completely closed but it's a tight eye so it it handled splitting and rain and humidity very well and it also had no issues with pests at all so i think this is a good contender for my climate and the final fig tree on my list is the martinenko ramada fig tree that is the fig tree that you see right in front of you right here this Martinenko Ramada fig tree right here is my biggest gamble, and that is because it was by far one of my latest ripening figs. I got very few figs off of this tree because of how late season it is. However, there's a reason why I want this planted in the ground in my garden. The first reason is this is a variegated fig and it is absolutely gorgeous. It is one of the prettiest figs that you will ever see with the variegated striping on it. It's just beautiful. The second is this has almost a completely closed eye, so it's extremely resistant to splitting and pests. I had no issues at all with any of these figs splitting on me. Now granted, a lot of that might be because uh, since it's so late in the season, it, they did not get to the point where they were in the strong ripening phase, and that's when they're most prone to bursting. So that plays a role in why this was so split resistant. However, the handful that I did get off of my fig trees were very good. They were a very rich berry flavor. Uh, they weren't quite up to par with the Italian 258 or the Col de Don Blanc in terms of flavor, but they were really very good. And this specific fig tree had a pretty nice medium-sized fruits on it. Not as large as the Italian 258 or the Borgeso Blanca Negra, but it was overall a pretty good size, and I like a more substantial fig. I'm not a big fan of the very small figs. So my logic is, if I plant this fig tree in ground and I let the root system get very large, it'll probably give me fruit ahead of what I can do in containers because my one in-ground fig tree is weeks ahead of any of my container figs. Having that root mass underground helps tremendously, 
and because uh, larger roots can grow a fig tree faster, you're just going to have an advantage with an in-ground fig tree. So this is a very good fig, it's good for my climate, and I think having it in-ground will solve a lot of the ripening issues. And there you go everybody, those are the six fig trees that I will be planting in-ground in my climate, and why. I hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit that like button, give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything that I use in my garden, please check out the Amazon storefront linked in my video description. Everything I use is in that Amazon storefront. Keep an eye out for a planting video because that's what I will be doing next. I'll be planting these fig trees in ground. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.